Hi, it's Kid with SV Jader. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make an icon using only the samples that the SV Jader library provides you. Let's open our folder project. Let's see that animation one more time. If you notice, the animation isn't that smooth when you drag the playhead around. But you can hold down Shift while dragging the playhead, and you can preview your animation back and forth, back and forth, much more smoothly. So let's make a second icon, starting from scratch. For that, I'm going to select the background of this pencil icon and hit Command D or Control D on Windows or right click and duplicate. Now we have a copy of the rectangle. Let's name it Rectangle 2. And I need this out of the pencil group, so I'll drag it over here. And now we're going to create using the library. And I'm going to use some symbols, some simple shapes. First, I'm going to add a square. I'm going to create a business graphic like a chart. And we'll animate it after we're done with it. Now, to place it, we have some smart guides which will indicate the center of the square, the element nearby which we want to align it to. Or we can hold down Command, select both of them, and make sure it's perfectly aligned by using these alignment options up here to align it vertically and horizontally. We can see it's just in place. I will go ahead and select the Transform tool and center the origin as well. Or you can use this button over here. I'm going to now change the color of this square and make it a lighter blue or reduce the fill opacity a little. We can easily adjust it later, so it isn't a huge concern right now. Let's add more. I want to create the axis of this graphic that it's going to be. And we can scroll down or simply use the search input to find the line. OK, I'm going to use this three point straight line. Let me add that. And I'm going to work with this tool, which will allow me to select the points or the nodes of the element. Let me zoom in a little. And, oh, make sure you have the Snap to Points option on. Now I'm going to reposition and change this shape to Snap to the Points of the Square. OK. Now I'm going to change the color for the line as well. I want to make it an even lighter blue. And... Reduce the width down to 3. You can also choose some stroke options here to make the joints to be square or round, for example. For this case, I'm going to make the line ends and the line joints all to be round. So basically we have the first part of our graphic. But we need to add something else. And I'm going to choose another polygon. This hexagon looks good. So I'm going to select the Node tool up here. And I'm going to drag its points around. And you'll see shortly what I'm trying to do here. something that looks like a graphic. OK, I need the axis to be on top. So I'm going to select this and quickly rename it. Axis. And drag it over the hexagon element, which is not a hexagon anymore. 
Okay, let's rename it something like graphic fill. No, 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 just fill. There. Okay, we can also play with the color as well. I'm going to make it another shade of blue. You can choose whatever color you like. Now I'm going to add another line. Let's see. Okay, the six point straight line. Let me change the color of it. I want to make it something a little more like this, this kind of a green color. And I'm going to snap its points over the points of the fill shape. We have an extra point here, but don't worry. We're going to place it on top of another one. Actually, we have two extra points, but that's not a problem. Let me drag it below the axis element and reduce the width of the stroke down to three. So this is a simple graphic icon that we just made using only the library. Now let's select by holding down either Command or Control. If you select the elements from the top to the bottom, like this, and make a group, it will maintain the position of the layers inside the group. Let me select Undo to demonstrate that. If you select them from the bottom to the top, when you group them, the ordering of the group will be reversed. Keep in mind that it matters the way you select the elements before grouping them. So I'm going to hold down Command, select from the top to the bottom, and Group. And it's the correct order of the elements, exactly the way I want them. Let's call this Graphic Group. Okay, and here's our group. I'm going to center the origin because I want to make it a little smaller. So I'm going to hold down Shift, and with the Transform tool, I'm going to scale it down a little. And we also have this, Background of the Icon which is still here in the folder group, right where we want it, between the two elements of the group. So we actually need this graphic group to bring it down here above the rectangle. Ah, and I see that the icon scaled down a little bit because the folder group already has its scale property changed. So it's normal for the graphic group also to scale because it's inside that group. Let's center it. Select Rectangle 2 and the Graphic Group, and choose these Align tools to make sure that it is centered, and let's also center the origin. We can now make a group from these two elements, the Graphic Group and the Rectangle. Right-click and Group. And let's call it Graphic Group. Okay, let me center the origin and center the composition here. Select the folder group and bring it to a more convenient position. Or let's use these tools to center it. Okay, now let's check what we've got going on here. Right about here, when the pencil icon almost finishes its animation, we want to start with the graphic animation over here. So let's select the graphic group bring it down here to hide it behind this section of the folder and shift P to add position. Drag the playhead about half of a second and move the icon up here. It doesn't necessarily need to be aligned with the other icon. Let's bend the path here. Whoops, sorry, undo. Okay, let's see how it goes. We can also shift S to add scale and scale it up a little. Maybe a little bigger than the other icon. Let 
and let's hit play. Okay. This is basically how you can create a symbol or an icon using only basic shapes. You can do more using the others. Every sample in this library, you can adjust it, change its shape or color, or any style property. In the next part, I'm going to show you how to animate an element by changing its shape using the Morph Animator. Thanks for watching.